in. And when you come to a church like this, where you have the privilege of being taught, where you have the privilege of receiving the word of God, if you are going to be useful to the Lord and you are thinking of your future in the gospel, your future in the ministry, every opportunity you have, you want to be able to take so that you can grow in the Lord. I am a Timothy, and that's my Paul, that's my mentor, that's my leader. And even though I was born again, before I knew him, yet he's my pastor right now, and it's the Paul is my Paul, and he's teaching me, and then I'm holding fast to the things that I've learned. Then it says that the things which are outside of me, in faith and love which is in Christ Jesus, in verse 14, that good thing which which was committed unto me, keep by the Holy Ghost which dwelleth in us. Paul the Apostle actually chose that man and trained him. And then he got him to actually do the work of the Lord. Look at Second Timothy chapter 2. Second Timothy chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 1. That therefore my son. You we'll see here. And Paul the Apostle was not, you know, thinking. After all, he had been born again before I became born again. You know there are some people that all the time, they are still looking back. I got born again at this such and such. I got born again at this particular time. And I wasn't even a member of uh, this church at that time when I was born again. Uh, so and so is my father in the Lord. He led me to the Lord. They have not forgotten. But Timothy was called upon to forget the past. Now Paul the Apostle has selected him. I haven't found him and been recommended to him. And then Paul the Apostle said, Do you have any other father? Do you have any other mentor? Do you have any other leader? And do you have any other person to challenge your faith and make you grow? Thou therefore, my son. Paul was talking to Timothy. Be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. But then Timothy was told to do another thing. You have learned something? Pass it on. You have got something? Give it out. And you have been disciple, disciple all the people in verse 2. And the things which thou hast heard of me among many witnesses. That's why we know that Paul the Apostle concentrated on training people among many witnesses. He trained others also. Not only Timothy. He trained Timothy. He trained Titus. He trained Epaphroditus. He trained Onesimus. He trained quite a lot of people. You had this Timothy while I was training you. I was training other people too. And then he said, among other witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men. As I looked for you, and I sought you out, and I picked you up, and you were circumcised, and then I started training you. Look for other people too. That's what we are saying. If you are a coordinator, have you always talked another coordinator? If you are a group coordinator, are you raising up another group coordinator? If you are a pastor, are you raising up another pastor? Or if you are a woman leader, are you raising up another woman leader? If you are a woman representative, are you raising up out of those women that are leading us fellowship, are you raising up other women representatives to you? If whatever you know, are you passing on? Are you developing others? Are you discipling others? Are you encouraging others? Are you edifying others? Are you training other people? The things that thou hast heard of me, among many witnesses, the same. Commit that to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Who shall be able to teach others also? It should never be heard that you are a coordinator and then we have a, ne a nearby district now. We need a coordinator there and we say, can you give us somebody that we are going to appoint there to be a coordinator? We don't have anybody. Why don't we have anybody? Be like Paul the Apostle, pass it on to Timothy. And be like Timothy, pass it on to other people. The things that you have learned, you are pass on to other people too. Actually, to show that you are a good leader, Everything you know, you pour out to other people. It is when you do that, and other people have been encouraged, they have been lifted up there, and they have been put in ministry. That's when you are successful as a leader. And this uh, Timothy actually he became such a leader that he was commended by other people and recommended to other people. In uh, Second Thessalonians, First Thessalonians chapter three, First Thessalonians chapter three. We're reading there from verse 2. First Thessalonians chapter 3. We're looking at verse 2. And sent Timotheus a brother, and minister of God, and a fellow laborer in the gospel of Christ to establish you, and to comfort you concerning your faith. And you see when Paul the apostle met Timothy, he was just a believer, just a disciple. 
before you, Timothy? I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm born again. That was all it was. Who are you, Timothy? I'm just a disciple. I go to church and learn. A disciple is a learner. Now that you have come to know Paul the Apostle, who are you now? I've gone beyond just ordinary believer. I've gone beyond just being a learner, a disciple. Who are you now? Well, I'm still a child of God, a brother. A brother to, to Paul the Apostle and a brother to the rest of the believers. And I, I'm now a minister of God. And then fellow laborer in the gospel of Christ. What can you do now? I can get the churches established as Paul the Apostle is getting them established. And that, that's the growth in ministry. That's a growth in your lifestyle. That you are not just a brother, you are a minister of God. You are not just a minister of God, a fellow laborer in the gospel of Christ to establish the Thessalonians and to comfort them concerning their faith. And that's what the Lord is expecting that we will do. And we will do that in Jesus' name. And if you've been coming to the church how many years now? Three years? You cannot eat us worship after three years? And you'll be coming to the church for five years, six years, and you cannot lead a zone after five years? Is it that something is wrong with the coordinators or with the zonal leaders or with you? And that you are not coming off. And Paul the Apostle is willing to take you and is saying, don't just sit down there. You can do more than you are doing. You can do more than just attending our fellowship. You can be a leader yourself. Because as the reason we are there as Paul, as Peter, as John, as the apostles of the Lord, as the leaders in the church. It is to raise up other people. And we must give priority. Priority. That is, we give it number one place. And we give it a very heart, a very attention, and we give it all that we have got to be able to train other people like Timothy and Titus and many other people. I want you to look at Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 11, and it gives some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. Why? That's why there's no full stop at verse 11. He gave us to be leaders so that something else may happen. Verse 12, for the perfecting of the saints. Have you ever sat back to think, why are you a coordinator? Well, I'm to preach in the district. That's is more than that. I'm to supervise. It's more than that. It is for the perfecting of the saints, the equipping of the saints, the encouragement of the saints. And the lifting up of the saints, and the maturing of the saints, which were to be involved in raising up other people for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry. We want to help other people to know how to do what they ought to do, and for the defining of the body of Christ. And then it says, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto the perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children. Who are we leaders? That the members of the church will be no more children. Children that can carry no wage. Children can, that can do nothing. Children that are just there to eat and to sleep, that we be no more children, and children that can easily be, you know, diverted and deceived and, and distracted, that the members of the church will no more be children, that when you are not there, they know what to do. They too, they can preach. And they too, they can stand, they can stand for the truth. And they too, they can stand uncompromisingly for the unchanging, unadulterated word of God. That's the reason why we're leaders. It says to welcome in the unity of the faith so that we're well, for be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slate of men and calling craftiness whereby they lie in wage to deceive or to perfect the same. That's why the Lord has called us and that's why we're leaders. Let's look at Colossians chapter 1. In Colossians chapter 1, a meeting from verse 28, who will preach one in every man. And teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. I want you to notice in that verse 28 how many times the words every man, every man, every man, how many times those words come up. And then it makes you to understand what we're supposed to do. You are the poor in that situation that you are leader. And then there are many Timothys over there. And there are many sisters over there. What are we to do? Look at verse 28 again. We will preach warning every man. We are preaching to every man. 
And we're not uh, kind of neglecting or looking some people. Uh, there may be some people who uh, they're not available like Timothy. And they're not approachable like Timothy. And if they Paul, the apostle will come to them and say, come, come over here, dear sister, come over here, dear brother. Uh, you need to do more. It's like, you know, they want to shield themselves, protect themselves. And they, want, they don't want to be stretched. I'm okay with what I'm doing. I don't want to be stretched. I'm alright the way I am. I don't want to be straight. I believe in pressure. I don't want to move from our scholarship to be a Zuna leader or to be a woman rail. I'm okay the way I am. They don't want to be stretched because stretching sometimes can cause pain and stretching can cause inconvenience and stretching may disturb you. You want to remain on the familiar ground where you are being. Be like Timothy. Be available. That even if you are supposed to be circumcised and the stretching, stretching you to a new ministry, to a greater ministry, to a higher ministry, will do something for you and do something for you, give yourself. But because it says we are preaching and warning every man and we are teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. Look at Second Timothy, I'm reading from chapter 3. Second Timothy chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 10. In 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 10, But I was fully known my doctrine. Paul the Apostle was talking to Timothy. He came to the point where he knew everything that Paul the Apostle was teaching. That was fully known my doctrine and the manner, and my manner of life. And purpose and faith and long-suffering, charity, patience, persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at, at Antioch, at Iconium, and, uh, and at least uh, what persecutions I endured, but out of them all, the Lord delivered me. I was talking to uh, Timothy's son in the faith. He said, Timothy, raising you up, and I have not hidden anything from you. If Pauls are going to raise up Timothy's, they must, not, they must not hide anything from those Timothy's. And you know, sometimes uh, the Timothy's who are there in the congregation, and uh, they say, it looks like, you know, our leader is exposing himself too much to us. A leader should still be a leader. And a leader should have and keep his secrets. Paul the apostle was not doing that. He exposed everything to Timothy, his persecution, his affliction, his manner of life, his principles of life, everything that he knew, and the doctrines of the Bible. He exposed everything to Timothy because he wanted Timothy to go beyond the little circle of usefulness where he was and go beyond. And you know there are times of Timothy's of a yearning. It will be like Paul the Apostle, that's enough, I'm tired. Didn't you see me yawning? When you see, when you see a young man yawning like that, Paul, what do you think? That means, uh, you know, Timothy is tired and this is too much. Talking about your affliction and your persecution and your manner of life and your principles and everything and the doctrine is too much for me. And yet there are some people like that. And those people, it's like they don't want to go beyond and be more useful to the Lord. They are saying, Paul, they are, that's enough, Paul the Apostle. I can't take more than that. But Timothy did not do it like that. Timothy got everything that was available from Paul the Apostle. And then he goes on in verse 12 years, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. But evil men and seducers shall want wars and wars, deceiving and being deceived. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. It says, hey, you must continue, Timothy. Because you now know of whom you have learned them. And then he continues in chapter 4, verse 1, I chant thee, therefore before God, and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick, the living and the dead that is appearing in his kingdom. Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all bound suffering and doctrine. Timothy, you need to understand this in verse 3. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their Lord, their own Lord shall give to themselves teachers, having itching ears. They shall, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. But watch thou, in all things endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. And as I Paul the apostle trained Timothy. If I put everything together, and I want to tell you, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, how Paul the Apostle trained Timothy, what will I tell you? Number one, association. If you are going to train any Timothy, there must be association. If, if you are far away on your ivory tower, 
and you never mix other people, you never go to Lystra, you never go to Iconium, and you never see where Timothy is, and pick up Timothy, and touch Timothy's life, you'll not be able to train Timothy. Number one, association. Number two, instruction. When he got Timothy, he knew what Timothy had known, he knew what Timothy had not known. He knew where Timothy was, and he knew where Timothy ought to go. He knew the limitation of Timothy, and he knew how to extend the course of Timothy, and he gave him instruction. Number three, demonstration. He did the preaching before him, that's why I said, you know my manner of life, you know my doctrine. You know my lifestyle. You know what I do everywhere. And then he told the Corinthians, I'm sending Timothy to you. Who will tell you my manner of life and my preaching, my doctrine? I've demonstrated it before him. If you are training a Timothy, you'll demonstrate, demonstration, everything that you are doing. All the preaching you are doing and the style of leadership and the style of ministry. Timothy is seeing that. The person you are, you are training is seeing that. That demonstration, number four, observation. Observation. Timothy himself must observe. He must look at everything. He must learn from everything. And there are many people in the church, you know, sometimes you think that that's a Timothy there. He's been there for a long time. He's been here now for how many years? Seven years, eight years, nine years. And you think he has been, we have, we have associated with him, we have instructed him, we have demonstrated all the doctrine, how we fill the retreat. How we have, a, how we have, a, you know, a congress, and how we have planning. It. We, we told him and showed him everything. We, we now said, now you go and do it. And then he says, I don't know what to do. But you've been here for eight years. Why you not observing? When we did it, if you're going to be well trained like Timothy, there must be observation. Number five, assimilation. Assimilation. You know, when you observe everything that has been done and the way everything is done, the old house service, where we start, then we continue. How we do this, how we do that, then you are observing it and you are assimilating it. You are taking it in, and you are, you are turning it over in your mind. And then, number six, participation. Get involved, get involved. 